From the Ear to There Travel Studio, this is the Ear to There Disney Podcast. The Ear to There Podcast, it's time to start the show. Be sure to hold on tight, here we go. Exploring all the different Disney destinations. Ear to There, it's time to start the fun. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Ear to There Disney Podcast. I'm your host, Phil Gramlich. I am also the owner and the founder of Ear to There Travel, which is a Disney specialized travel agency. And you know what? It is my mission in life to take away all that stress, all that anxiety, and all of that time that it takes to plan a Disney trip so you can focus on the really, really fun things like having a great time with your family and friends and enjoying the magic. And I take away all that stress. I take away all of that anxiety. And I give you back all of that time at absolutely no, yes, that's right, no extra cost to you. So like they say in Grim Grinning Ghosts, and that's hard to say, rest in peace, the haunting's free. All of my services, like the haunting, is also free. Is that a stretch? That might be a stretch. You know what? I'm cool with it. I'm leaving it in. (laughs) So let me be your guide. I want to be your guide, right? Let's stick with the Haunted Mansion as a theme. I want to be the Raven in your Haunted Mansion. The Raven was supposed to be the original narrator, the original guide of that attraction. And the Raven was supposed to take you through each scene, helping you, explaining everything to you, not letting you get lost in the story. That's what I want to be when it comes to your Disney vacation. Make sense? I think that makes sense. It's not as much of a stretch as the other thing I said. <laughs> you can find this podcast, my blog, or request a free, yet another free thing, free, no obligation quote, over at eartothertravel.com. Oh, and I want to hear from you. I want to know what you think about this week's show. So head over to eartothertravel.com slash message. Send me a message about the show. Let me know what you think about this week's show, about this week's co-host or guest, however you want to say it. I'll give you a hint. He's kind of a pain in my butt, but in a good way. Send me a message. Go to eartothertravel.com slash message. Let me know what you think. Everyone that sends me a message this month in November will be eligible for a free candle giveaway from the Magic Candle Company. Alrighty, this is episode number one. 147, that's right, 147, for the week of November 12th, 2018. Now, grab a drink, grab a snack, and as a famous mouse once said, on with the show. And I'm going to start off this show like we start off every other numbered episode of the show, and that is with the What About Bob segment. Now, if you don't know who Bob Gurr is, you might have been living under a rock for the last 70 years, probably. No, I'm not going to give you too much grief. Bob Gurr is a Disney legend, a retired Imagineer. He was actually hired by Walt Disney in 1954 to help design the Disneyland attractions. And he's built and designed such things as the submarines, the Matterhorn, the Doom Buggies, the Autopia, the Monorail, you name it. If it's on wheels, Bob designed it. And each week, Bob comes on the show to answer one of your questions or mine. And the What About Bob segment has a sponsor. And of course, that is the Waltland Bus Tour. So each month, Bob takes a group of guests around Southern California. They make stops in Burbank, in Los Angeles, and in Glendale, stopping in a lot of the famous historic spots in the history of the Disney Company, and more importantly, in the life and history of Walt Disney. To get tickets to the next or one of the upcoming Waltland bus tours, just head over to www.waltland.com. And here he is, the man, the myth, the legend, Bob Gurr. It's what about Bob? Bob Gurr, the legend, creator of the Matterhorn, the monorails and the haunted mansion. What about Bob, the Disney legend? 
what is your f- this this one comes from uh Samantha Cook. She wants to know what is your favorite modern invention. She didn't specify modern, but but whatever your favorite modern invention is. Oh, let me think about there are so 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 many things. I would have to say overall the concept of digital mathematics and electronics. Uh, it may sound like an awfully simple answer, but stop and think. Up through the time electricity was sort of discovered in the middle 1800s and then became practical by, the, by 1900, and everything then became what we would call um, analog, which means it's not digital, but the fact that this computer code of everything is a zero or a one, the fact that that is the golden heart of everything that goes on in the world today, that's sort of a non-specific invention, but that's the thing that makes everything possible. That's something that I don't understand. <laughs> but that's fine. Well, I, just, I just had to answer it for no, you. No, no, <laughs> no. You, you, I know. Uh, if you've got some computer literate people, people that are into every kind of thing, you know, from, say, uh, navigation, electronics, communications, smart, smartphones, commuters, satellites going out to Pluto and stuff, it's all based upon this concept of digital mathematics zeros and ones that is a building block that can be compressed down into the tiniest chip possible you got to remember what this means is a smartphone today probably has a hundred times the computing computing capacity that the space shuttle had uh, back in the 80s yeah that's insane Hard to believe it is yeah it's now, unbelievable. you've got, you got a thing where automobiles today uh, almost any automobile today, even a, one that sells for about $2,200, probably uh, also has like 10 times the computing capacity uh, of the space shuttle. And thank you to Bob yet again for answering another question on the show. Bob is the best. I say it all the time, but I'm so lucky to have Bob on each and every week. And I feel like I'm smarter, seriously, Every time he answers one of the questions on the show. All right, moving on to episode number 147. And it's all about our favorite Disney attraction characters. One thing I really love about Walt Disney World is the work that the Imagineers have put into every attraction. Not only do they come up with backstories for the attraction, they come up with original characters and then come up with backstories for those original characters that you will meet and that you will encounter in the attractions or in the shows or the pre-shows or the post-shows. It's an amazing, incredible feat. And it's something that no other theme park on the planet does anywhere near as well as Disney. Disney storytells better than anyone. And the stories in the attractions begin and end with the characters. That's why this week I wanted to talk all about our favorite original Walt Disney World attraction characters. All right, here to talk with me about our, are you ready for this? Favorite attraction characters in Walt Disney World is a man who has been called a character himself. I don't know if that's in a good way. Chuck Rodriguez, welcome back to the show. Thank you, and no, it's not. not (laughs) Chuck, it's been so long, man. I I was like, I've been jonesing for some Chuck on the podcast. It has happened at least once since I moved, which was only three months ago. Okay, so once. That's not not often enough. We gotta, I gotta, I gotta make (laughs) it happen more often than than that. So, all right, so this is the fun thing about you when we record podcasts together. You don't like to prepare. <laughs> <laughs> you like, like, I just literally sprung that on you at this moment. You had no idea what the subject was going to be, what the topic was going to be until right now. That is correct. 
Um, I find that there's so few good surprises in my life, in fact, none whatsoever. <laughs> that... <laughs> yeah. You know, you're always, you know, what you do when you, when you talk to people, you know, when you come on the podcast, you just warm the hearts of the people who are listening. You really and that... do. That that is the essence of my character. <laughs> All right, well, let's get it started, man. Since you are the guest, and it's been way too long since we've talked, you go first. You gotta. Get, get, I'm expecting you to bring your A game and come up with five. So so let's go. I have like, let's see how many I have written down. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have seven written down, just in case you take one of mine. But uh, I'm ready, man. Hit me with your first one. Your first. I don't know how. See, I was going to say how you prepared, but you didn't. So, um, <laughs> how do you, how are you looking at this? Just, just, I'm curious. Are you looking at this as I looked at it as original attraction characters? So, characters like Dopey on Seven Dwarfs Mind Train would be out. Right? Would not? No, no, it would not count. Okay, good. That's all right. That, great. That's how I looked at it. All right. So, let's hear your yeah, first one. Full, full disclosure: When you texted me earlier, like, the two or three possibilities of the topics. One character immediately went into my name the second I read your sentence, and that's it. I have not had any moments to think about it since then. <laughs> that's fantastic. Great. Um, it's gonna be a, so just, I'll start with It's going to be character. a bang-up show then. <laughs> yes, yes, it will be. Uh, it's all on you. It's going to be all, all right, you. Yeah. No, it's no and different than the rest of my life. Everything on your choices. That will be... <laughs> Wait, what? I'm sorry. We were both talking at the same time. What would you say? Oh, I said, so the whole show will be you saying your characters that you prepared for and then me just criticizing them. Yeah, that's so my that'll life. be the whole... That's my life. That's my life. That that's is what, your, yeah, that's what happens um, to me every day. Yes. So, yes. Yeah, so the one that I thought of the moment that you send me the topic is the father in Carousel of Progress. Nice. I didn't think about him at all. Great call. That was the first one that came to mind. If I'm not mistaken, is his, his name is officially... I have no idea. The father in Carousel of Progress. He has a name, and I forget it, too. <laughs> yeah, of course he does. We're gonna I call always want to say Tom Morrow or Mr. Johnson, but I, I, that was just the, the two the, That was the two guys in uh, Mission to Mars, right? Yes. And what is – it's Rex Allen. Is that the guy who played the voice? Yes, that voice? I remember reading years ago. Yes, the voice. And that's also the voice of the narrator from A Christmas Story. Same guy. It. Uh, in the Mickey's? Oh, oh Christmas no, Story. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. Well, you're, you'll shoot yeah. your eye out, Ralphie, all that. Yeah, so he's supposed to be old, old Ralph. You mean? Yes, he's yeah, he's Ralph looking back and telling the story. I got you. I got you. Okay, I did not know that. Thank you for that Christmas-related trivia. As I'm already staring next to my fully decorated tree. <laughs> I see, Chuck. I respect the heck out of you for that, man. <laughs> I I love I I want like I'm in a Christmas spirit already. I'm ready to put the stuff out, ready to get the tree. I just I usually hold off until the day after Thanksgiving. But speaking of Thanksgiving and Christmas. Back to the Carousel of Progress. <laughs> That's true because it does – it is holiday-related. The, the original show was one scene per season. Yeah, and we and did – we talked afterwards. about that before on the show. Yes, and it did go back to that when they when they all – I guess was it 1994 when they switched back to the original 1960 World's – 64 World's Fair and the original song, which actually I don't like as much as the second song. That's I so guess. funny. You and Amy have that in common. I know. And I, I suppose that's just because that was the song that was around during the first 20 years that I went to Walt Disney World. So, obviously, that's why. So, for the listener who doesn't know that song, can you give us a little bit of that song? So, the one that I actually prefer, which yes. is, now is the time, now is the <laughs> best time, now is the best time of your life, which is never true. There's never a good time in life. <laughs> <laughs> Again, warming the cockles of your heart. <laughs> I mean, really, if I you mean, don't next 50 minutes or so that we're doing this, that maybe is kind of a few moments that are good. But other than that, that's fine. <laughs> hey, at least you're saving them for the podcast. You're that's welcome. Good. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. So the dad in Carousel Progress, I, I don't know his name. Uh, I, I will call him. I'll call him Jimmy. <laughs> I don't think sure. that's his name. It's not Jimmy. Uh, yeah, I like that pick, man. I don't, do you have anything else to add with that? Or is that just your favorite character? Well, I just say I like it because I like the Castle of Progress in general, and, and he just stands out. I mean, I, I, if, I guess my second choice would be Wilbur, uh, cousin – no, cousin Orville. Orville, cousin, yeah, Orville. Cousin Orville, yes, cousin Orville, but who you, we only see for like a moment when he's in the, in the bathtub because he invented his version of air conditioning. No privacy uh, at all, that guy. Yeah, the air cooling. 
but but the father really represents the entire the entire show, yeah, right? he, and it's those rare Disney attractions that's been around technically since 1964 and only gets four people uh, in every show all day long. But you know, but we still like it. You still see it. So well, it's got, that's why it's, it's got Walt Disney's fingerprints all over it. That's why it's still there. I suppose yes, that makes sense. You don't think? You don't think? I mean, it, no, no, I, I do think that's the the reason. Sure. Yeah, it's and and people have talked about changing the finale scene, and it did go, like you said, it, it under it's go, undergone some changes with, but what's cool is the virtual reality thing is kind of back in in fashion now. The whole when they're playing the space, the space True. game at the end, yeah. And True. I'm the resident of flying ace now, the grandmother. <laughs> um, but yeah, I all right. So good first pick. I'll, I'll accept that for. Having no preparation and not caring about the listeners even a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so for, you're going you you went Rex Allen, I think his name is. I'm going with another Rex for my first one, and I have to admit that I'm cheating a bit because currently this Rex is not in the parks, but he's coming back, and it's Captain Rex from Star Tours, the original pilot, because yes. he is going to be, I think, the MC or the host. At the new cantina in Galaxy's Edge, a uh, DJ, I, a I DJ, think right, right, yeah, 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 that's right, that's right. I knew he would be there in in some fashion. So spinning records and slinging drinks, probably <laughs> is what he's going to be doing. <laughs> but I thought he was just a great original character, such a cool like. I that is what's really neat about Star Wars and Star Tours is. You can make up whatever the heck you want and put it in there, and it makes sense kind of in the universe. A robot that flies a you know, a, a taxi or a, an airline, whatever it is, from planet to planet, why not? So, And it's a, it's a, Paul Rubens did the voice for him, and Paul Rubens uh, will be doing the voice for him again when Galaxy's Edge opens the cantina there. So that's going to be really cool. Paul Rubens, of course, is Pee Wee Herman. Uh, oh, good for him. his first job in 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was the Pee Wee reunion a few years ago. Yes, there was, there was. There was. The show came back. He had a big, like, bro- not Broadway, but like an HBO show and all that. Yeah. And he looks exactly the same. It's amazing. I know they caked yeah, the look- makeup on that guy, but still. He's like, he's got the, the Dick Clark jeans. You know, they always have Dick Clark back of the same. Oh, uh, <laughs> that, that, until the end there. That was. It, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean, but it was hard to watch Dick Clark. They shouldn't have had him on TV anymore. It was, yeah, the, the New Year's Eve. My yeah. lord, the poor guy couldn't even speak anymore. It was a shame. <laughs> well, it was his show. He produced it. I, I know he did. It. I know it was his call, but somebody had to step in there and be like, hey, man, <laughs> let Seacrest do it. He's got it. Trust me. Let's pass the reins. Seacrest is the new Dick Clark. I he bet is. he's going to look the same in 40 years. He's going to look exactly the way he does <laughs> He now. does now. and it was tw- He looks the same as he did 20 years ago now. When American Idol first started, you're absolutely right. Yeah, you're he right. really does. So anyway, so... Yeah, Captain Rex. I, I loved the character. I loved it. You know, it was his first time. His, his first time flying, and when he at the end, when you were walking out, it was like, uh, "What did he say?" He was like, "Come back again. I'll, I'll do better next time." It was just. Yes. I can't do the voice. Like, absolutely can't do Paul Rubens at all. But uh, I won't even try. But uh, remember, can you do a P way? I bet you can't. Can you? Just only the laugh, like Let's we get... all used to do. But okay, all do it. Do it. Terrible at it. Do it. Wait, now I gotta remember. <laughs> no, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. I'm like, that's not. That's not. Pee. I haven't was, watched the we in a long time. I forgot. It was. It was <laughs> like that. Oh, like, that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get off of Paul Rubens for a second. Um, yeah. So that's he's my first one. I thought it was a great. He's a great character. Great original character that the Imagineers came up with, and. Uh, I, I, you know what? Some, something crazy I read recently was that uh, George Lucas rode Star Tours for the first time, and he brought his camera to film it so we could show people, and they made him stop filming <laughs> in Disneyland. I thought that was hilarious. He's the guy who created all those characters, and they're like, oh, George, put the camera down, buddy. Not not, in, not near you, don't. You think what a... Done it, you know, before operations took over the ride, so that because they they are they are taught to do that. So. I know, I know. I just thought it was really funny that the guy who created all those characters, they were like, not not in our house, buddy, not in Mickey's house. Anyway, man. All right, so our first two. Now you gotta you gotta somehow come up with your next one. What do you got? I'm gonna go with one that I'm assuming is on your list, but uh, it's Madame Leota in the Haunted Mansion. No, I have another. I have another character. Really? Okay. Yeah. 
I have another Haunted Mansion character on my list. So I do love Madame Leota. I'm assuming that we – do we consider little Leota at the end of the ride as the same person as the one that's inside the um, the crystal ball? That's a great question. I think it's it's the same character, right? It's the same – it's the same person. So I, I – yeah, I, I think you could do a, kind of a two-for-one there. Yeah. So, so yes, that's what I like. That's the, 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 the seance room is, to me, always the highlight, even more so than the, uh, the ballroom. Just wow. like, you know, a, a, a teeny bit. But I would say it's my preferred room uh, at this point in my life when I write it 30 times a year. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, and, yes, and, of course, uh, merchandise-wise, there's been, there's been a lot of Leota merchandise. So Yeah, they, they really have – when they opened uh, Memento Mori, they, they really – got a whole new like lease on per, you know forgive the pun actually <laughs> on haunted mansion merchandise now you can get anything and that was something that was really lacking i think in the park cuz people love haunted mansion and love to like dress as the butlers and the characters and they love that stuff the hitchhiking ghosts all that agreed agreed so, it's no. about you know yeah. speak christmas i um there, there's so many haunted mansion ornaments tree ornaments now that i'm considering next halloween to buy a black tree and have a halloween tree oh you're so weird <laughs> <laughs> they just, sell them will you so. have christmas and halloween just keep them separate you people and, and christmas and halloween together you'll be telling me the next no day. i wouldn't come by no I, I would have the black tree up until october 31st and then i put my christmas tree up starting november 1st all right well it's weird so there'd be no there'd be no uh, weird halloween town uh jack skellington situation going on no thank god that's weird stuff <laughs> I get so much hate mail whenever I talk about that show. I really do. You do. So you gotta, that, you that movie. be careful, especially this time of the year. You gotta be careful. I know people like they, I, and I get. I understand if you have like a super like allegiance to a film, but people like either it's it's such a crazy thing. You either love that movie and will defend it until you die, or you're like me and you're like, yeah, I don't get it. I just don't get it. You know, not for nothing, uh, as, as much a true friend that I am, uh, the next time you get a lot of heat uh, for a while there for saying something about uh, Night Before Christmas, just go ahead and and um, and post one of these recordings that you have not edited the kinds of stuff that I like to say that you always edit, and <laughs> therefore I get the heat off of you for months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do have to go through these and edit them pretty heavily, actually. <laughs> um, all right, so Little Yoda, Madam Yoda... Was yours? I I do love I love that character. I love the the hurry back at the end. Uh, the Jack is especially terrified of that. <laughs> it's always fun for us. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's a good one. I ha, let me ask you this, and this is something that I can't remember. Did the uh, the crystal ball in Walt Disney World's Haunted Mansion that didn't always float, right? It didn't used to, and then when they redid it, then they put the floating effect. Yeah, in? It's a Yes, I don't remember if that was in. It wasn't. It wasn't the uh, the 2010 renovation. It had to have been long before that. Yeah, but I remember going through and it not moving at all for yeah, my yes. you yeah. know my first I several started trips. Started moving in the the renovation that they did like back in the early 2000s. Or something. Okay, yeah, that's probably right. Yeah, I just, I just remember it sitting still uh, from a video that I had that I took when I was on the attraction that I was not allowed to take. I could have been kicked out like Lucas, <laughs> but I did. I did it anyway. <laughs> Um, all right, so my next one. Now this is this is mine from the Haunted Mansion. It's a different character, and mine is the Hatbox Ghost. I think is an awesome, awesome original character. I have you seen the effect in Disneyland or you, when in yes, person? Yeah, I watched the, the video uh, on YouTube. Yes. Oh, it's so cool, and it's just an, a really, really cool effect. Uh, it's been kind of like an unofficial uh, mascot of the Haunted Mansion for years and years and years. That was one of the effects that the Imagineers wanted to put in something like 50 years ago, and they couldn't figure out how to do it. Uh, so finally, it worked. It, when it works, it's cool. When it's not covered with like a sheet, <laughs> which they do sometimes because <laughs> it's not working. Uh, but when it's it works, it's really cool. And it's not just the effect in Disneyland. I mean, it's the character itself, I think, is a really, really cool original character. If For the listener, if you, if you haven't seen it, it's the guy – who has the hat box under his arm and then he has the head, like a regular head and then his head disappears and then it appears in the hat box. It's a really cool effect on the attraction. It's a bummer. We don't have it in magic kingdom. I'd like to see it there, but you know how it goes. Oh, 
surprised in the next uh, in the next upgrade. But and I have to say, and this one, you know, when I'm not not cynical, but more analytical and not emotional, as we all know, I'm not really that emotional. Um, what I'm fascinated about the the the, the hat box ghost is the story behind it. The fact that he appeared at Disneyland for like three months and enough people remembered it, whether it's people who work there, yeah. engineering, or whether it was actual guests, that the idea still continued in people's heads for 40 to 50 years until finally somebody's like, oh, well, now technology will let us do it. Let's try it again. Yeah, they tried it. it's a really cool thing. Yeah, it, it goes to show you, man, like none of those, the good ideas never die. Never. They're always kept around. I've, I've talked to Bob Gare about that. Like, He's told me that he's recovered at in the archives. He's gone back, and I've been in that archives room that they allow the public to go to. Yeah, and it's a small room; it's not very big. But from what I understand from Bob, it goes back. Like there's a big section that we don't get to see. Sure. And he's gone digging through the archives, and he's found sketches that he's done in the fifties and sixties that they still have in file boxes. Because hey, you never know when you're going to bring it, bring something back. You never know when a good idea, you know, is gonna is gonna come around. Like he had the uh, the idea to do a Greyhound bus on the Autopia in Disneyland in the fifties. Walt Disney wanted a Greyhound bus built, and Bob they designed it and they were going to build it, and then they realized that ah, well, how could you drive it? It wouldn't really work. They were also going to have like cop cars and stuff and a, fl- a fire engine, and Bob designed all that stuff and it never made it to production. But it goes to show you, man, that stuff. That's always going to be there. It's crazy. True. Great follow up, Chuck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> such, an, such a conversationalist on this episode. <laughs> so yeah, the Hatbox Ghost is the idea that never died. I lo- I just think it's a cool effect, and it's it's one that I'd love to see in Walt Disney World. I understand why they don't have it yet because Disneyland is a much more of a locals park. People come on the weekends. Every weekend, they come once a week. So Disneyland gets those little upgrades that Walt Disney World doesn't get. Like that one and like the uh, the new Pirates, the effect of Pirates of the Caribbean, when you go around the corner and the ghost, the skeleton turns into the person. Have you seen that one? That's a really yeah, cool effect. That's a great effect. And that was one that uh, I have a friend that works out in California, and he was telling me that was in the hallway at Imagineering for like a year and a half. And the rumor was that it was going to go to Tokyo, and uh, instead it op- they put it in the Disneyland. So really cool, very cool that they had it. They didn't. So Walt Disney World maybe could have gotten that one, but they didn't. Also, the octopus looks like Hank from Finding Dory. Did you notice that? Yes, yes. Yeah. Somebody actually did mention that to me that uh, one of the times I, I rode not long ago. Yeah. So when we rode with the kids last year, they were like, "It's Hank." I was like, <laughs> and they completely missed this the skeleton turning into the pirate effect because they were staring at Hank the whole time. All right, Chuckles, what do you got? What's your number three? So I cannot remember the specific name of the guy, but it's the in in um, in Dinosaur in the pre-show. There's Doctor Marsh, and then what is the name of the guy? Oh, I'm not supposed to be put on the spot here. This is my podcast. <laughs> uh, Seeker. Dr. Seeker? Yes, Dr. Seeker, that's yes, it. Because I kept thinking Beaker, but I'm like, it's not Beaker. During the ride, you don't hear beep, beep. You don't hear that. <laughs> that would be a completely different attraction. There's a dinosaur coming. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> <laughs> it might be more fun, actually. That could be an interesting. You know, I remember back in the day, I, I, I used to read that uh, uh, when when they thought of still of having an actual Muppet land behind Muppet Vision 3D, there was yeah. going to be a Muppet version of the Great Movie Ride. So it, like that, right? Like just a Muppet version of Dinosaur. Oh, my God. Would that be the – I love the Muppets. That would be so much fun. Hence, I love the Muppets. We named our dog after a Muppet. <laughs> yes, you so, did, and so, that's why I make all the jokes about hey, hey, dog, you're not even cute in 3D, dude. I laughed so hard and for the for people who don't follow both of us on Facebook. First of all, you should. Second of all, I tend to put pictures of the dog up because he's kind of cute, and Chuck likes to make fun of the dog. It's very funny, and he went with the the Statler and Waldorf line from uh, Muffin Vision 3D. That I laughed so hard when I saw that he wrote. Uh, yeah, he wrote. You wrote exactly what you said. Hey, dog, you're not even. Would you write? You're not even cute in three D. Hilarious. That's right. Very funny. So, um, where the heck were we? Where? Oh uh, yeah, Doctor. God, Dr. we Marsh. completely off the topic. Go ahead. Sorry. 
So unless I think of another one uh, that comes from a pre-show in, 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 uh, before this podcast ends, um, I think that's my my favorite uh, uh, Disney attraction pre-show characters because I feel that I um, uh, I do the cat's phrases or I quote them the most out of all pre-shows. All right, well, let's hear them. Let's go. Oh, you're putting them in the spot. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're supposed to be prepared. <laughs> Uh, well, we're not going to make it. We're not going to make it. I definitely yeah. have said that in different circumstances. It does not, not just when we go on the ride. There's many things that that make me think we're not going to make it. We're not going to make it. You know, uh, so there's that. And, um, and and those coordinates, we're in. I like the, that. One. Oh, yeah, we're in. Yes, I've done that, too. Yes. Like, even if I just put a password in the computer, sometimes that just comes to my mind when I do that. <laughs> yeah. Like Desmond from yeah. Lost. You yeah, punch yeah. them in. We're in. Uh, <laughs> that's a good. That's a good one. I have a. You know what's funny is I have a uh, a pre show character on my list too. Oh, good. I figured that. I'm, let me see. I think that's what I'm going to go with next. Yeah, I want to go okay. with him next. And he is, of course, my one of my favorite Seinfeld actors of all time. Of course, my Patrick Warburton from Soren. We're Soren over California with uh, his whole the whole flight attendant shtick spiel before. Soren is phenomenal, and he's a great original character. Uh, even though everyone Patrick Warburton plays is exactly the same, like, he doesn't change. You're right. Like you're absolutely right. He, yeah. Even what I know, you never watched this, but uh, he was on like the last like three or four episodes of Designing Women before, <laughs> and even then, his character was so similar to all his characters. Yeah, he's just this dry sense of humor, like one line at a time. Like Kronk is the, one of my favorite characters ever. And yeah, he plays them perfectly. But on Seinfeld, I, I always love uh, him as Putty on Seinfeld. With the remember the high five episode when when he's selling Jerry the sob at the sob dealership, everything he's like high five. I love that episode. And then Elaine's like, "What are we gonna have for dinner tonight?" And he goes, "Feels like an Arby's night." <laughs> <laughs> I been, speaking of lines you use all the time, Amy. Hates me for that. She'll always ask me, what are we going to do for dinner? And I always do. Right. Yeah, it feels like, it feels like an Arby's <laughs> night. <laughs> and I've, I haven't been to Arby's in at least 10 years. I've never go to Arby's. But it's just really, really funny. Uh, and yeah, his character is so good in Soren with the when he does the whole thing. He does the, the pre-flight check and then he does the, uh, you know, the, what you can't have. And he's like, and these little these little babies. And he gets the guy's. Mickey ears off his head. All oh, these little beauties. The beauties. And then he points to the kid and yeah. does the nice work, pal. Love yes. that. <laughs> and it's because it's so deadpan. It's not, there's no funny lines. Oh, it's no. It's just that it's so deadpan. It's a perfect. No, he doesn't have a joke in the whole thing. Right. But it's just right. really funny. It's just really, to this day, I laugh every time I'm, I'm in that attraction. So, yeah. So, that's my that's my pre-show. I, I thought about uh, going with Sir from... The Alien Encounter pre-show. He was another one oh, of mine. Oh, that's a good one. I, I thought of that next few minutes. I definitely would have said that one. Yeah. So that. So okay. Well, since you don't have a real list, do you want to go with him? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Let's just put. I, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll wait for my, the one that popped in my head a little while ago. Um, yes, sir was great. First of all, I don't. We don't do. I, we don't give enough justice uh, to Alien Encounter because I have to be honest. That is one of the very rare times in my life where the first time I went on it, obviously not having the internet and YouTube video, so I knew nothing back then. And it literally, it did scare me. It yeah. actually did scare the bejesus out of me um, the first time I went on it. And and I went on it, of course, a million times after that until it closed. And that's another one where we I definitely uh, would quote that. Uh, like, one of you. One of you. <laughs> I used to do that all the time. And I try to remember some other quotes from it. Do you remember any? Uh, what he the, I, I, I wasn't thinking of the the intro from, with Sarah. I, I was thinking of the attraction. Uh, I remember the whole... Oh, yeah. He, was, see, he wasn't funny. I get him mixed up with the fake Sir from Stitch's Great Escape. When he did the 90210. Oh, did that, that didn't joke. even exist. That, it never happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I it's forget. I just remember him saying excess tech and yes. uh, yeah, and, and and what is it if you live life, life might as well live with excess or something or to excess or something like that. I forget the tagline, but it was uh, yeah, he was like the robot, the android that did the whole Skippy thing, 
And it, yes. th- he transported Skippy from one tube to the next. And then, of course, poor Skippy, when he came out the other side, he was totally burned and disfigured. Oh, uh, yes. And he said something like, uh, you just have a healthy glow. Yeah. <laughs> so obnoxious. Yeah. It was Tim Curry, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, so it was Tim Curry. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Which, who always plays very obnoxious characters. Like one of my favorite movies of all time is Clue. And I quote him all the time from Clue also. Oh, it's funny. is I One of my favorite movies, and this is, shows you where my maturity level is, is Home Alone 2. <laughs> and... <laughs> I love I love his character in Home Alone too. He's the he's the jerk at the front desk. And, yes, uh, yes. And it, when he's like when Kevin tricks him and he's like with the talk boy and it and it talks and he's like, Hi, how would he do? This is Peter McAllister, <laughs> the, the father. father. <laughs> I love that. I, I love that you love I dude, I love that you knew the words too. That's great. Well, I mean, my goodness. Do you know how many times we have seen that movie? I remember seeing it the day it came out. Me just too. Like I saw the first one, too. Me and too, yeah. And by the time yeah. the second one was out, like, we made a whole weekend out of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Howdy do. <laughs> 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 but now I'm thinking of I, – I'm trying to think of his lines. I don't even remember his lines in in that movie, Tim Carey, but I remember him with the big smile when they play – it. Uh, they're first they're playing It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Christmas, and then it switches over to – the Mr. Grinch song when he finds out yeah, that Kevin's... And they put him side by side. So yeah, and he has the big smile, smile, the evil Grinch smile. Oh, it's so good. But I got to say, I think his character as the, you know, the, the jerk head of the front desk in a hotel, he was actually, um, he's he's who I exemplified for the first 20 years of my career in operations. <laughs> <laughs> that was you as a cast member. <laughs> that must be. <laughs> <laughs> you love to give people terrible news. And why now I'm just a pass holder. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, sir, see, I look, now I'm doing all the heavy lifting here, man. I'm giving you your own list. I know that one, but that, thank you. I mean, I have another one, so I'll wait for after yours. All right. I'll, I'll do the one I thought of. All right. So my next one, let me see. So since we're talking about, sir, I want to go, this one's actually on my list. And it was the alien from extraterrestrial alien encounter. Talk about, sure. talk about an original character. You know, and when the the uh, attraction was conceived, it was going to be Nostromo, right? And that was going to be the movie Alien. You were going to be on the Nostromo spaceship, and the alien was going to be there. So that was good from the movie. So that's what was going to be breathing down your yes. neck and chasing you and in the dark. And so Disney decided that was too scary, and they couldn't get the rights or whatever. So they, instead, they decided, we're going to design our own terrifying alien and we're going to put him in a glass two, three feet from the crowd and see how it goes. And it, I'll tell you, man, the, like you said, it, it scared you. The first time I saw that alien in there, it, it, I was scared, man. It scared, yeah. it scared me to death. And when it broke the glass and it was like, it was there and it's smoke and the steam and the, the breath and the, ah, it looks like my mother-in-law, all that stuff. <laughs> It was awesome. Yes. Dude, when it would breathe on your neck, was that like it? I still, right now, I just got to chill thinking about it because I was thinking about that hot breath on your neck. And it free- and then when it would like the walk across. The hair. Oh, yeah. And the tongue. I don't wear a hat, which of course I used to wear a hat all the time when I wore the pucks. But yes, I, I learned after a while to take off my hat to see you feel that uh, that effect. That effect, yeah. And then when it would walk or or whatever, like use its its arms across the, the, the theater and your harness would go up and down on your shoulders. Man, what a great character that was. And it was it was just the way Disney designed it where you you saw it, but the scariest parts were when it was pitch black, when you used your imagination as to what was going on. I loved it. And then when the technician, the poor technician got eaten <laughs> and ripped <laughs> yes. apart. Like, like, the poor guy is there to help you, and he's like, hey, is everybody all right down there? And he has a flashlight. And then you hear like, <laughs> and then you get sprayed with blood. Like, what a gutsy move by Disney Imagineering to do that. It was shocking, actually, to this day that it lasted as long as it did. It really is. But, um... Yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm kind of surprised that they they finally took it out. Because by then, really, we're desensitized. I mean, it was actually not scary anymore by the 2000s. So, I don't know why they even bothered taking it out. 
Uh, and and they to replace it what they did, like you said, it didn't even happen. It never existed. Uh, I, that that building's not even there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, I, the one thing I mentioned it before, and I always thought, thought it was the funniest and weirdest thing about this attraction was that there was. I, I know I've said it on a podcast before, but I'm going to bore you with it. Was that there was an actual cast member up in the rafters with a flashlight, like they couldn't design an effect to make it look like there was a person up there with a flashlight. There was every single show, there was a person, a, an actual cast member, up in a rafters with a flashlight. I just thought that was funny. It was weird. I mean, that is, because it's you would think it's really easy to make that effect, actually. Right, right. But it wasn't. They didn't. They had a real person up there. I just thought that was funny. But yeah, maybe, so. Maybe it's because they really were concerned people would freak out, and you can't get out of that thing. So if somebody was having a heart attack or something, somebody's got to, you can't get out of it until the show ends. Yeah. yeah <laughs> the, I don't know. Harness. And yeah, I mean, the person does get eaten and that's scary. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so yeah. So, okay. So that was my, I got, let me see how many, I have a few left, but, uh, yeah, I but got, you go okay, ahead. So I have two, I think now. So, um, All right, in my mind. so, um, okay. The next one is, uh, uh, at Everest, the Yeti, but specifically yes. disco Yeti, because at this point I, I, I was not, um, I had already moved temporarily to New Jersey when Everest opened with real Yeti. So I missed out on real Yeti. So I have only known Disco Yeti. And at this point, I think it just has such a cult following. And I'm really surprised that they have not done those vintage style t-shirts uh, with Disco Yeti specifically, like a disco ball and yeah. Yeti looks like he's dancing on the t-shirt. I, I would buy that in a second. I never buy Disney t-shirts. It's so <laughs> funny that you say that. We talked about that. I talked about that with... Johnny short sleeve on the show and he was like, man, you should design that. And I was like, dude, people have those shirts. Like go on, go on uh, Etsy and oh, look yeah, and you'll find so. it. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're all over the place, but yeah, you're right. But Disney, I think it's such a kind of a black eye for Imagineering that they won't, there's no way they would make that shirt, but it, it's, it's a shame. Cause I love now. Embrace. I mean, at this point, they should have embraced their faults and they they're not a plan apparently yeah. to, who fix it? So there was a tweet by Joe Rody a few months ago where somebody called him on it and he responded with something like, "There's there are plans," or maybe it was an Instagram post, but he said there are plans to, you know, it's in it's in the plans to fix Expedition Everest and the Yeti. Uh, I did get to see it. I was there opening week. Um, yes, yeah, figured. I was there for I was a cast member, so I was there for cast previews. Uh, so I got to see it. Uh, really cool. Really, really went with swing down at your car and just a really right. neat effect. And it's so funny. I, I read people and I hear people say all the time now they're like, oh no, when I like they just wrote it and they were like, oh no, it definitely swung on my car. And I was like, no, no, it didn't. No, it didn't. <laughs> like it hasn't moved in forever. And they're like, no, it definitely did. It moved. No, it didn't. It doesn't move. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm hoping that someday it can be restored to its operating, its operating beauty because it and is the- cool. And in the meantime, I'm sorry, do do the merchandise. If they can embrace a wall painted purple in a part <laughs> of our land that's only good for walking quickly, um, I think they can embrace uh, Disco Yeti. I think ha- they can do it. Have you it. seen the Share Your Ears now right next door to that? No. So right next door to the, to the purple wall that they've enhanced, yeah. there's now there's they, they, they painted a Mickey bar, like a Mickey Ears, Mickey Premium Ice Cream bar. Uh, okay. And they have Mickey ears painted on the wall that you can kind of squat. Oh, you have to stick your head underneath, you mean? Yeah, you squat underneath them, and it looks like you're wearing right, right. your ears. And okay. on the wall painted, it says, share your ears. I don't no, know. That doesn't bore me, but I get why people like it. I, I, you, to be honest, Chuck, there's nothing for me either. No, I, I've never. It's a new thing, a newer thing. They, they started out in Disneyland with Pixar Pier. They did these, like, people were taking pictures of the purple wall for a while before it was, like, even a thing. And then Disney caught wind of it, and we're like, oh, well, we can make some money off this. So they they touched it up, and then they started selling purple wall t-shirts and hats, and and they, now they're doing it all over the parks with the, with the uh, the walls. They had the Buzz Lightyear wall out in the Pixar Pier, and the Up wall out there, and all kinds of stuff. Not for nothing, but when I'm at the parks, and, and if I'm with people who suddenly say, here, let's stop and take a picture, the first line out of my mouth is, what are we, Brazilian? <laughs> I'm not going to comment. Here. It doesn't, it doesn't, I do not, not see any point taking pictures. I'm not commenting on that one. Uh, <laughs> not going to get myself in trouble with. I know, <laughs> I know, I have Brazilian listeners. 
Uh, I know I do because I booked a trip for one of them. Carolina, hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's going to hear this and be like, that's me. Uh, so I'm not, <laughs> I'm not making fun of any Brazilian listeners or people on this episode. Um, so yeah, thank you, Carolina, for booking the trip with me. Um, all right, moving on. <laughs> let's let's uh, go to sure. let me see. My turn, right? Yes. All right. This is one that I love. It's a character that's original. It's one that I think every person who's ever ridden this attraction notices, and it's a very minor character on the attraction, and it's the hairy legged pirate. Oh my God, I totally had that one in mind. I was not going to say it next, but yes, good job. Yeah. Good job. Thank you, Chuck. This, again, they don't give these shows to chimps, okay? I know what I'm doing here. <laughs> uh, um, so, yeah, like, I, I, for some reason, that's always, that pirate has always stuck in my head as one of my favorite pirates on the enti- entire attraction. Like, you go under the bridge and his feet are hanging and you see his dirty, gross foot with the mud and like sand on it. And then he's got this hairy leg. It looks like my leg dangling down over the boat. And for some reason, I'm I'm a you know I'm, I'm a kind of a hairy indiv- individual. Um, you are too. You're a bit of a hairy guy yourself, Chuck. A little bit, yes. <laughs> Except your hair, you have hair on top of your head, and I haven't had that in probably 20 years. Um, but yeah, it's it's something that's always kind of stood out to me as like, wow, Disney Imagineers put so much thought into this attraction that they put hair on the leg of kind of a throwaway character on a, an attraction. I mean, the level of detail is, is astounding. And I just always thought that it always stuck in my mind that that was such like a testament to Disney Imagineering. And I love it. So yeah. So the hairy legged pirate is one of my favorites. Yes. And I, I thought of it because um, actually I can think of a couple relatives who, uh, you know, fresh off the boat <laughs> in America. And one of the first <laughs> things I got to do was go to either Disneyland or Walt Disney World. And one of the things that, that I, I guess that they remember the most from that, those first visits is the details. And that, and that is one of the examples of details that they actually remembered from that first visit. Um, so it's one of those things where you don't, you don't, you assume that an amusement park is going to have a ride and there's going to be a, a pirate in it. And the pirate would you know, barely look any better than a, than a mannequin at, at, at Macy's with an eye patch on it. But in reality, I think that's the, that's, a, um, uh, it's an example of how incredibly detailed they get. That's why people remember it. Was that when young Cuban Chuck got off the raft in <laughs> 1978 <laughs> in Miami? And then went right to Disney World. <laughs> yeah, that's how it goes. Uh, tickets in her hands. Yeah. That's how it goes for you guys. You come over on the raft from Cuba and you go right to the gates of Walt Disney World. I think I'm pretty sure that's how it works. That's, that is yeah. how it works. <laughs> no, I kid Chuck because I love um <laughs> Chuck is Cuban and I'm not making fun of Cubans, I'm just making fun of No, Chuck. no, I know you're not. But <laughs> I've made that joke about myself a million times. Oh yeah, I've heard it. I've heard it. That's why I felt comfortable making it actually. The things that we brought with us on the raft, the things we had to do while the the dolphin that that finally brought us to shore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, that's great. Okay, so all right, Chuck, you got one or two more. So let's 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 hear them. Let's, all right, my next me. one is my favorite country bear, Big Al. Oh man, I didn't. I how did I forget Big Al? I was. I thought you might have that one. No. So yes, I um I've always had a thing for Big Al. I remember uh my Cuban grandmother after the, her first <laughs> visit to Walt Disney World. Uh, one of the souvenirs that I think they bought and had for many years afterwards was a was a Big Al plush doll, and um, and there is a certain uh, I mean it's 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 actually lost now, but there is a VHS tape uh, somewhere in the world uh, from 1994 where we're watching the Christmas version, and when Big Al comes out, you hear my brother going, "Look, look, look over there! He looks like mommy." <laughs> <laughs> And we still quote that. All oh, that's the time. really funny. Your brother. Uh, so yes, I love Big Al. Even though it's just a, it's just like you know one tiny little song, but he's the one you remember the most all the time. Every time. Yep. Every single time. And again, a song that in 2018, you're like, wow, it's pretty surprising that that song's still on the show. Like when it is, it's a surprising thing. Blood on the saddle, blood all around, all that stuff. It's surprising. Yes. Yeah. Right. I, I love. I dude, I love that and. It was funny when you mentioned the the plush because my grandma gave me 
a big Al, uh, ceramic bank when I was a kid, and I had and I hadn't even been to Walt Disney World. I don't know where she got it. I, I don't because she hadn't gone, but it was a ceramic bank with Big Al with the big guitar or banjo, whatever you're playing, and right. uh, I had it sit on my on my dresser for years uh, until. We had a dog named Pete who jumped up on the dresser and broke it, knocked it down, oh. <laughs> shattered it in like a million pieces. And then I think I probably and that's went. why pets are overrated. That <laughs> no, they're awesome. not. Pets are awesome. <laughs> but that I think I used it to go buy like chocolate milk and Doritos or something. After that, it was like, oh well, my life savings <laughs> are now chocolate milk and Doritos. Um, <laughs> but dude, but, uh, Big Al's a great. It's a great call. I love that. I love that character. And the show was one. It was weird when I my first couple trips to Walt Disney World, I saw it. And then I had this huge gap where I never went to Country Bears. And then when I had kids, now it's it's a every trip to Magic Kingdom show. Every single time we're there, we go. Because right. it's it's a walk-on every time. You don't wait in line. Just walk into the show. And my kids love it. And they can they sing the songs. It's, it's really cool to have my, you know, Alexa sitting there at seven years old and knowing every word the Big Al's going to sing. It's so cool. Uh so don't tell me having kids are overrated. I think that's the next thing you were going to say. <laughs> oh, you said Alexa. Now my Alexa went off. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. <laughs> that's it awesome. happens all the time when I'm speaking to AB on the phone. <laughs> that's really funny. Uh, yeah, it happens to me all the time in my – I ha- actually have it now in my little office, so it's it didn't go off, so I'm surprised. Uh, probably because my accent never picks up on it. Um, <laughs> all right, so uh, let's see. I have Yeah, I have two more. Um, so I'll be able to finish it out. I think I have two more. Let's see. Um, no, no, I only have one more. So do you have, you said you have one more and then I'll, I'll finish it out if that's okay with you. Yeah, sure. So do you want to go back to back? Yeah, you go and then I'll go. Oh, oh, wait, I got to think about it because I, because I said big Al, so you're next. I know. All right. You don't have a character, do you? (laughs) I mean, I did have one. I got to remember it now. I had one. I had one in mind, but I thought that I would have another, you know, few minutes. God, you, you got a beautiful new apartment. I was narrowing you, it down. I was narrowing it down. I you have a, a minutes to narrow it down. You have a beautiful new apartment. Do you have a pen and a pencil or a pencil in there to write stuff down? My Lord. All right. So yeah, this is my last one. Electronic. It's a brand new apartment, so everything's electronic. Oh, no okay. Sure, sure. All right. Here's my last one. My last one is going to be... And you might want to argue with this one, but I, you, and you, you'd you probably be right to do so. It's the Jungle Cruise Skipper. I think the Jungle Cruise Skipper is the best original character in the Disney parks. And it's it's obviously it's a different person when, when you ride. It's a different cast member. But the jokes are kind of the same. They have some wiggle room on what they can do with the Jungle Cruise and what scenes and what corny jokes they use. I just love it. I think the Jungle Cruise, it's one of those attractions where the person that is running the attraction can either completely ruin the experience or completely make it an unforgettable one. Uh, To me, and I've quoted this line a million times, but the one when you get stuck and the the skipper says, I'd like to take this time to point out some of my favorite plants in the jungle. Oh, yeah. There's that one and that one over there and that one. Oh, and that one. I love that. And I, and all the jokes, you know, the doctor, uh, this is named, it's Schweitzer Falls, named after the famous doctor, doctor Falls. Falls. <laughs> so good. Uh, everything, the backside of water to the elephant bathing pool to the piranhas to the, like the, uh, the alligator when he says, uh, oh, there's a great alligator joke. Shoot, I forget it. Wow, man, I forget what it is. Uh, but anyway, snaps. Yeah, ginger snaps. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because gingers don't go near ginger because ginger snaps. Great joke. Uh, everything, the elephants washing their trunks, all that stuff. Hilarious. I love the Jungle Cruise Skipper. And I, again, it, you may say it's not an attraction character, but I disagree. I think it completely is. No, I think that's uh, that's that's really going deep. But I am very impressed because, yes, as as a whole, I mean, how many, you know, Jungle Cruise skippers have there been, uh, you know, throughout the years? Probably I'd like to know the number. Um, I wonder. I knew, actually. I've known a couple who had that job at some point or the other. Um, so I think that, no, that that's that's really great. And I will say my, so every time I go, which is not as often as, you know, used to be, but um, I I rate the, the skipper on if they match or if they, or if they repeat the two 
what I feel are the best jokes I've ever heard that I've only heard it twice. One from one skipper said it once and then another one that another skipper said. And that is uh, when going behind the waterfall, of course, only works at night. They, they, they shown their flashlight and kind of danced it around and, and started singing the theme song from Fantasmic. Well, like, so I thought that was really great. That's awesome. And, and, yeah, that was really good. And I've only seen that once so far, but I've heard other people say they have seen somebody do it. And then um, you got to do the, the, the song. Do 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 do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do 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 do. Awesome. And then um, at the end, as you're going as you're going through the temple, at the end, there's those those golden statues yeah. that are like broken, and somebody called them the Golden Girls. So that was it. That's <laughs> that, everyone else. If no one matches that, they're they're out. They're out. They're the worst skippers ever. <laughs> Dude, that is shocking that a Golden Girls joke made one of your top favorite jokes on the <laughs> I never would have guessed. It is all right, Chuck. It's all up to you to round out the show. What do you got? Your last character. Okay. So, oh, I lost it again. Wait, I'm going. <laughs> I, this is I where the editing to... comes in. This is why I have to edit. This editing is a very good thing. Um, <laughs> so, actually, He's and stalling. I assumed I would not get to say this, and I'm going to say it again because I'm not emotional, so I really don't care. It doesn't make me smile or anything, but I'm just impressed with with how much money they probably have made off of this original character, which is Figment. Yes. Yes. I'm really, really impressed how huge Figment has has um has remained. Um just merchandise wise alone. So even people even people who never got to see the original uh, Journey to Imagination rides, it doesn't matter. They they know that Figment is a, a huge part of Disney and, and I think they don't realize that it's not even that that it was just invented just for a ride in 1982. It wasn't it had no other you know background to the Disney company. Great, it's a great one, and it's it's one that I had as a, as I was hoping you would bring it up because it, I was going to mention him at the end if if we didn't get to him. It both Figment and a Dreamfinder, both amazing original characters. Now, of course, Dreamfinder is not around anymore. But God, I'm sorry. You there, Hello? Chuck? Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, I thought I, I thought I lost you. I said uh, Dream, Dreamfinder is no longer around, but. You're right. Figment, amazing character. I think Tony Baxter was one of the ones that designed him, uh, kind of came to him. Originally, Figment was like a green and yellow dragon, and it changed him to the, the kind of purple and what yellow and orange kind of that he is now. Uh, yeah, great. This is a really cool character. And yeah, like you said, he was originally designed as like the mascot to Epcot or Epcot right. Center back in the day. And. That you know that ride went through a, a few different iterations. That middle one, which was Oof. absolutely atrocious. <laughs> but this one now that we have is great for kids. I th- my kids love it. Uh, for yeah, us, you know, kids, you know, because kids, you know, they don't know any better. They're not that smart yet, so <laughs> <laughs> it's fine for them. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, I think with that, it's probably time to end the show with that comment. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do love, I do love the character. It's, it's great for kids. It's, and you're right, you see it everywhere. You see, you know, I, I've run a lot of the run Disney races, and you see a lot of people race and run races dressed as Figment. It's and the Dreamfinder too. It's, it's a, it's definitely yeah. a character that has kind of hung around. And with all the rumors and, and the changes coming to Epcot. I imagine, like you said, maybe just from a a pure um, merchandising standard, that he will probably stay a part of that park. I'd imagine he had to. Yes, my my best guess is that he would not. It would not be an attraction. I, I I'm convinced now that they would they would use the space to have a, a an, an attraction based on a brand new IP, uh, which is kind of sort of imagination related, <laughs> like. Um, like uh, what was it? The ones that we well, actually, Wreck It Ralph. I've heard somebody say Wreck It Ralph could be a good imagination. Yeah, Inside uh, Out, one. or Inside Out. Yeah, yeah, that was always the one people talked about. But um, but I I say they double down, do Figment in a four star, five star restaurant. I think they would make hundreds of dollars per minute. I take go for it, go for it. Are you serving Figment, or he's going to be a character? <laughs> <laughs> no, just a figment themed restaurant where maybe like you know like the um the restaurant on the on the Disney cruise ship where while you're eating everything goes from black and white to color because uh, yeah animator's palette yes 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 I haven't been there forever uh yeah something like that but anyway uh, who knows what they'll do but they they have to use them because 
they're going to want to make money off of him, you know, for till the end of time, and they can. I love the uh, who know and love their figment. Maybe Disney Plus could have a figment uh, show, a cartoon. There you go. I'll have the uh, filet of figment, please, with a uh, <laughs> side of Dreamfinder mashed potatoes. <laughs> All right, Chuck. Thank you again. You were the man. Thank you for coming back on. This is fun. Thank you for having. This is a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, we're going to get you back on before three months from now, definitely. Okay. Awesome, Chuck. Thanks again. Talk to you soon. And that is going to do it for this week's episode of the Ear to There Disney Podcast. Thank you once again to my co-host, to my friend, Chuck Rodriguez, for coming by. When I say coming by, I mean calling on the phone on Skype. He and I were not in the recording. And a recording studio together. But thank you, Chuck. Like I said at the beginning of the show, Chuck is kind of a pain in the butt, but in the best way possible. You're the best, Chuck, if you're listening. Uh, I really mean that, even though I want to say that to get you on the show. Uh, just kidding. Thank you, Chuck. And thank you again to the one and only Bob Gurr for answering yet another question on the show. Bob is the best. And most importantly, thank you. Thank you so, so, so much for listening to this show thank you for subscribing thank you for your reviews on itunes or wherever you listen oh i shouldn't say itunes apple podcasts now <laughs> that just reminded me of carousel of progress actually oh i shouldn't say sarsaparilla we're calling them root beer now <laughs> root beer it is all right but thank you for listening seriously to every episode for subscribing for all of that stuff i try to put out my best shows each and every week i hope that comes through i hope you're enjoying them and again, if you want to tell me about it, if you want to tell me about a show that you liked or if you didn't like it or if you, you know what, don't tell me. if you. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, you can. <laughs> you can tell me if you didn't like it, but uh, just send me a message. It's eartotheirtravel.com slash message. Let me know what you like, what you didn't like about the show, and you will be eligible to win that candle from the Magic Candle Company. Also, since we're at the end of the show, if you want to just buy a candle from the Magic Candle Company and you don't want to wait to see if you won... Head over to eartotheirtravel.com slash candle. That way you can buy your magic candles. And don't forget to use the offer code FILL15. That's capital P, capital H, capital I, capital L, 15. And you will get 15% off your entire order. All right, just remember there will be a new episode of the Ear to There Disney podcast each and every Monday. As long as I'm not late and release one on a Tuesday sometimes. <laughs> and a new episode of the Walt Disney World Word of the Week or coming soon to a listening device near you. More It's a Food World episodes. They will be on Thursdays. So until next time, thank you again so, 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 so much. Have an amazing week. I hope you're enjoying the fall into the winter. What a great time of year. Bye-bye. Here to thirst. Here to thirst.